I'm at the uh, ADHD friendly stand in uh, lovely B uh, Baltimore in the US uh, where I'm just recording a podcast and uh, I've got a special guest joining us today we've got Patsy who works for ADHDfriendly.com Hello, I'm Patty Blinderman. I'm an ADHD coach, professionally certified, and I work with individual clients. But for the conference, I'm here sharing information about my online ADHD-friendly membership community that is designed to tilt the playing field so we're thriving with ADHD. And I offer services that bridge the gap between your intention and action. So you're getting the things done you intend to do. So you're a coach by background? Mm -hmm, I am. Excellent. Right. Okay. So ADHD friendly, do you work with adults, young people as well? I work with adults and then I also coach students high school and above. Right. Okay. And I can see just on the poster just behind you there. So you're covering aspects such as, you know, uh, feeling overwhelmed, uh, feeling isolated, alone, uh, frustrated. So the emotional regulation can be an issue as well. Organization or the executive functioning. What are the aspects of your work do you cover? when you work with the individuals? A lot of time management and a lot of putting structure around things. So we talk through what resistance do you feel around that? What would get in the way of you taking action and having it be the thing that you tried to do, getting it done. And really just talking through where are the gaps. So we use the strengths to bridge and meet you where you are so that they're not undermining you. The things that are weaknesses. So we focus on strengths. So I can see there's a sort of a, a membership that you offer to clients. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. If um, anybody's interested, check out my website, ADHDfriendly.com, where I'm offering, a, I don't know when your podcast comes out, but I'm offering a conference special, um, a discount on the monthly fee that includes all the live sessions as well as there's courses on there, there's free tools, and there's a video library so you can go in and if it's your thing to watch things at your own pace, you can do that, but... The big focus is on live sessions because I know we have lots of great intentions. We know what to do. We know how to do it. We're still not doing it. So that's my mission is to bridge that gap. And also you do webinars. You offer webinars? I do. Yeah. I do, but I call it First Friday Webinar. I did it today because it's the first Friday of December. And each month is a different topic focused on something around ADHD brain wiring to help you to learn about your brain. And then I share strategies around it. So for example, today I did a webinar on finishing strong, how to wrap up 2023 intentionally. And I shared strategies. So maybe everything on your list didn't get done this year. Do you remember your list? <laughs> do you know where it is? And if not, what would you do differently? So I want you thinking about what are you going to change so that you're working more around what works for you in the new year. And, and the courses that you offer, do you want to say a little bit more about that? Sure. The courses that are up in the platform are designed to help you create your own personal owner's manual. They're also in there to help you think about what you need to succeed. And right now, you're standing in front of my new ADHD-friendly planner. And I am in the final stages of developing a course to go along with that. So the planner is the tool, and the course walks you through it and helps you to plan step-by-step -step your week your month and your day very ADHD friendly ways to do it very ADHD friendly I can see as well <laughs> so fairly simple I'm just flicking through the uh, the planner and uh, stole it last night <laughs> so what's that sorry somebody stole it last night I oh no it out. yeah I they left a little Hershey kiss so I think it was a, some kind of a barter arrangement I wasn't aware of but I appreciate if it was sparkly and somebody was like this is just what I need yeah, it, yeah. it's okay so when you work with your clients, obviously you provide them with one of these yeah. and then they'll just keep it and work through it yeah, and you yeah, discuss it and exactly. cover it through your, your sessions. It's really helping understand where are you time blind and what do you need to externalize? And by that I mean external, concrete, visible tools so you can see your time. Because often we have lots of plans, but there's no way we're going to get them done in the time we have allotted. And the more we make them concrete, we can see that so we're not getting frustrated. It's like, oh, you know what? I, there's no way I can get all this done. Let me do this one because that I can get done in the time I have. It's all about priori uh, prioritizing the tasks and, uh, and... Prioritizing is hard with our brain. Everything's equally important. But if you can see what you're trying to do in a concrete external way, you're a better able to make decisions. And it's, it's quite interesting that you have obviously uh, a printed copy of the planner because everything's moving online now. I've seen lots of planners, apps and stuff like that. How is this received by clients compared to you know using apps and stuff like that? Clients I work with will get a PDF of it and they can use it, they can fill it in or they can print it out. It's completely up to you. You do what works for you. I do really highlight 
how important it is, even if you keep an online calendar, everything I do appointment-wise is online on a calendar. But I then have to write it down physically to help it stick in my brain. So I just share that perspective of what would it give you if you had a way to think through it physically with an external tool. And then you're still using your digital online system, but often it does require externalizing it to make sense of it and make sure that your planning you're doing is actually something you can succeed. Yeah, and that's something I've seen in some of my clients as well. They've preferred to, even their diaries, mm -hmm. some of them still prefer a physical diary instead of like an electronic. Exactly. So there's a lot of tools that you can do digitally, but there might be one or two that would serve you better if you did them physically. Amazing. Uh, once again, do you want to tell us your website again? ADHDfriendly.com. Excellent. And um, you offer services, anyone, uh, anyone can access them from anywhere in the world. If you have a, a way to connect virtually, look me up. And Ex then, Excellent. Yep. Nice to meet you, Patty. Thank you so Cheers. much for your time. It was Are you enjoying the conference? I'm having a great time. It's amazing. It's great. It's full on. It is the best thing that we can go to each year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People and we feel a very safe, non-judgmental connection. I've picked this right moment to do the podcast just because it's quiet now. Because I was trying to do it earlier, but you, you, you know, it's so hectic oh, in this yes, room. It was very hectic earlier. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. You too. It was a pleasure meeting you. Take care. See you later. Bye. Guys, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Josh. My name is Ben, and we're from Brigham Young University. Excellent. And do you want to tell us about your company? Yeah, so we're a student startup. Um, we're not producing anything or selling anything yet, but we're here at the ADHD convention trying to get some feedback on a product we have. Okay, um, I can see uh, there's a couple of hats here. <laughs> so that is a product. Kind of, yeah. We have beanies with integrated haptic motors. So the same motor that's in your Apple Watch or your iPhone is the same one that is embedded into this hat. A lot of people who require extra stim really enjoy the relaxing feeling. It sort of feels like a head massage. Okay. So, oh, oh does it? Right. I, I might have a go at trial in it, if that's right with you guys. I'm just filming you as well whilst we're doing this. Um, so what's the purpose behind these beanie hats? Go for it. Like we said, it's for people who enjoy extra stim, who fidget a lot, who have trouble maintaining their attention during mundane tasks like laundry, dishes, or we're college students. We've tested on other students who need extra help focusing during homework or reading or studying. Yeah. Uh, and what's the research behind it? Is there any research that's been done? So we've, we've run uh, a small study ourselves with some college students um, who were able to focus slightly better with an earlier re revision of this prototype. Um, it's the idea for this came kind of from, um, it was kind of inspired by EMDR. The use of haptic motors in therapy is something that's already well supported in the literature. Um, we're trying to figure out if we can move it away from the hands to the head to kind of give similar effects. Uh, what we plan to do moving forward is another clinical study where we can kind of get the kind of get what this does specifically nailed down. Um, we'll we'll get a lot of our product and and do a, a formal study. Right. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say. Oh, um, do you mind filming me whilst yeah. I'm doing this? <laughs> so what you can do. Okay. Is, um, Which is hat. So any, just just grab any. You can keep it. You sure? Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! Amazing. <laughs> um, Okay, so, yeah, just put it on normally. And the nature of having a prototype means it's going to be a little finicky. But right. put this on your head with the two orange bars to the back. Okay. Looks good on you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Color <laughs> For the final product, we'll have an app where you can customize the routine and the intensity. Right. A lot of people like different patterns. Okay. Some people want it really, really strong, and other people yeah. like it really soft so okay. the final product will be totally user-based and they can use it whenever and wherever they want we wanted a portable version of like weighted blankets that people love yeah. and fidget toys but we wanted something more discreet that you could use at home or work and so we have a couple different patterns that it can do too eventually we want it to be full maybe i should wait until you got the microphone i don't know is that is that okay yeah that yeah. looks great okay. um, perfect right how do I look? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It, yeah. Um, I can feel the vibrate. I'm just, yeah, just trying to describe what I can feel. Yeah, just vibration everywhere, back, side, front. Try a different pattern here, too. Right, okay. This one should right. be like an orbit going around your head. Yeah, yeah. Would that not distract someone with ADHD, like when they put it on? 
initially it feels a bit because obviously I'm not used to having something vibrating right. on, in my head um, but obviously eventually the idea is to just calm you down and similar yeah. to like a weighted blanket where you put it on you and it just relaxes you and yeah and so our prototype's a little limited right now. Um, it only has four modes. But what we have found is that um, when people are given the opportunity to customize it, we think that they'll be able to find something that works for them better. Especially people whose ADHD manifests with like anxiety. It can be very effective. People with autism. Basically, dealing with overstimulation, this can be a way to kind of uh, give a focus to somewhere else to divert all that energy, and it can calm you down. So this could be used at any different type points of the day. So you could be like trying to fall asleep. You could be during the day when you're finding a bit emotionally kind of stimulated and you just want to calm yourself down. It could be used for children and adults as well, I'm assuming. Yeah, right now our focus has been um, kind of the young adult spectra because we're college students and so that's the that's the uh, group of people the demographic that we have access to um, but you're absolutely right it totally could be used during any time of the day we see people um, bringing this with them to work or school or just using it around the house and turning it on as they need it not wearing it necessarily the whole day um, but using it as it suits them and uh, one big design philosophy that we had when we were making this was we wanted to make something that would be unobtrusive, that people would feel comfortable wearing in public, which was why we decided to put it in a beanie. Because when you wear a beanie, um, you know, everyone wears beanies. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't stand out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Perfect. So when are we likely to see this out being rolled out? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, we're definitely hopeful to get it out in the next year or two. Okay. Um, but as is very evident here, we're very much in the early design stage. Okay. Um, and so, you know, we want to run a clinical test. We, we need to get more production ready prototypes done. Um, but yeah, hopefully yeah. in the next year or two. If anyone wants to find out more information about the beanies and just the whole tech technology behind it, do you have a website people can visit? We do have a website. It's uh, getquell.com. Quell is spelled Q-W-E-L-L. -L. Um, and on our website, there's a place for um, interested persons to put their email and get on our beta test list for when we do have a, a product that we're getting ready to launch. Yeah. Yeah. I, could, I, could feel it. I could still feel it. <laughs> I could still feel the vibration. It's, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so certainly I'll look on your website and certainly for our listeners, anyone listening, like um, what Joshua said there, visit their website, find out more about it. We'll definitely look out for it. Certainly we are from the UK. I'm not sure if at some point it's going to obviously get launched over there, but okay. um, yeah. we'll keep an eye out for it. Thank you. And so yeah, much. good to meet you, Ben and Joshua. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks Cheers. For Thank you. Thank you. Take care. I'm at the Beyond Book Smart stand. Yep. And I'm here with Hannah. Hi. Hi there. Do you want to tell us about what's uh, Beyond Booksmart? Yeah, sure. So we are an executive function coaching company. We provide one-on-one -on -one executive functioning coaching for people um, who struggle with executive function skills. Um, many of our clients have ADHD, but not everybody, um, because anybody can struggle with executive function or executive dysfunction, I guess. And um, we also provide services in schools, too. So um, our uh, Brain Tracks um, division works with teachers so that the teacher can teach their kids, all the kids in the classroom, executive function skills and tools and strategies so that all kids, regardless of any diagnosis or not, can start to learn strategies early so that when they go, when they transition to higher schools or when they transition to college or out into the workforce, then they have um, more of a more self-confidence and more knowledge about how their brain works. And what age are we talking about here? What, what age groups? Yeah, all ages. Um, we coach uh, from elementary all the way up through adult. I mostly work with college and adult, and we have many of our um, coaches that work with elementary, middle, and high school. And then um, our Brain Tracks program uh, works um, with school aged, like any school age. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I can see there's a big well behind you there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is that part of the, uh, the, yeah. the work you do? It, yeah, you want to spin it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shall, we, shall we have a go? Yeah, <laughs> okay, go. all right. Um, any direction? Yeah, no, just pull it down. Go for it. Okay, perfect. Right, here we go. What's it going to land on? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, 
Ooh. extra raffle entry, <laughs> extra book raffle entry. Our right. CEO wrote this book, Your Kid's Gonna Be Okay. Yeah. And it's all about um, executive function tools and tips. But I think you should spin again. So I we can spin again. talk about one of the, uh, ADHD, right, okay. the yeah, yeah. ADHD symptoms. Okay. Here we go, just spinning one more time. Difficulty tolerating frustration. <laughs> have you ever experienced that? Is, is that, is, is that? It's saying that I have difficulty. Yes. Now, for the rest of the day, you're going to have difficulty tolerating frustration. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's but what I've been okay labeled. Because we have strategies for you. Right. Okay. And what are the strategies? Um, well, um, this is our brain, our squishy brain. If yeah. you're feeling frustrated, you can squeeze this and you can keep that. Thank you. You're <laughs> <laughs> it's our squishy brain. It doesn't it feel good? It, it feels great. Yeah, certainly. I've I've seen quite a few of these, and yeah, certainly for young people, one. even adults, the um, uh -huh, uh -huh. make use of them. Yep. And then this is our ADHD challenge spotlight for difficulty tolerating frustration. And this is an emotion regulation tool called Five Finger Breathing. And you take your hand and you hold your hand out, and then with your other hand you trace up and down like this on each finger. And then as you go up, you breathe in. Right. And then as you go down, you breathe out. And what's really great about this tool is you can do it well. nobody will notice. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. they shouldn't notice. Um, and, and that's really great for regulating any f emotions that you are yeah. feeling when you're feeling frustrated. Right. Mm -hmm. I've just spotted uh, on the wheel, it says decision paralysis yes. there. Yeah, that's, that's really a big common. one. Yeah, it's really common for people with ADHD, yeah. um, as you probably know. Yeah. So um, that is uh, something that I work a lot with, uh, with a lot of my clients on, is like um, dealing with decision paralysis. Right. Yes. yes. And what are the strategies for that? Yeah, so one, one that we really love is called Covey Quadrants, or um, the um, Eisenhower Matrix is another word for it. Um, and that's where you categorize the things that you need to do into whether it's important, not important, and then urgent or not urgent. Mm -hmm. And so urgent and important are the things that you really need to pay a lot of attention to. Not urgent, but still important, are the things that are usually like really good for you, maybe spending time with family or exercising, or it's like something that you're looking forward to doing, and it's really important, but you don't have to do it right away. And then urgent and not important can be things that you are already ready for or things that are interruptions like yeah. phone calls your parents asking you to do something that you don't want to do or your boss asking you to do something you don't want to do yeah. and then we have not urgent and not important and that's uh, like time wasters right. um, and so this can really inform you um, into what you should work on like if you find yourself spending a lot of time in the not urgent and not important that tells you maybe you need to address some things in your life like maybe you need to work on that emotion regulation or maybe you need to you know assess your priorities yeah. Um, if you if you see that more things are urgent and important, then that means you need to you know really use some good strategies to check things th these things off your list. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All very helpful techniques there. Yes. <laughs> <So, laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, if uh, anyone listening wants to find out more about your services, uh, have you got a website or social media? Yep. Yeah. So we have um, our website, which is beyondbooksmart.com. And then um, we have my podcast, which is Focus Forward, as I mentioned before. And also, um, we offer community education webinars. So if you go to our website, you can sign up, you can get your name on our mailing list. And then when we have a webinar come up, We'll send out the um, email and then you can register. All of our webinars are free. And um, yeah, so and we also have a ton of free information on the pod, on the um, website. We've got our blog. We have really interesting infographics that can explain a lot of this. Um, and then uh, there's just uh, there's a ton of really stuff, of really good stuff on. So there. your main focus is around executive functioning. Yes. So okay, that's what we live for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, how about emotional regulation, mm. which is obviously yes. another key characteristic of ADHD? Yes. Would you help clients with that at all? Oh, uh, that's like the first thing we usually work yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So part of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a it's a um, managing big emotions is a really big as you know is a really big challenge for people yeah. with ADHD and even if you don't have ADHD. Um, and so I know that's often one of the very first things I work on with my clients is how are yeah, having ADHD is really frustrating. There are some things that are going to make you really really frustrated so how can we increase that dist distress tolerance how yeah. can we tolerate that frustration by working on our emotions mm -hmm. first you have to recognize name it what is that emotion that i'm feeling and then figure out what strategy works the best for you uh, i'm obviously uh, we're, f we're from the uk mm -hmm. 
do you support clients across the world as well? We do. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so people can just go on your website and get access to more information about it. The time zone might be like a little trickier to organize, but we our coaches are super flexible and we're really passionate about what we do, so we're always wor- willing to work with people. So your coaches are executive functioning coaches? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So like I am a coach and I also um, through coaching discovered, I was like, I'm really relating very strongly to a lot of my clients. So maybe I might have ADHD. So I recently went through testing and found out that I have ADHD and that's just really informed my coaching and changed my life for the better. Right. Before we finish, can I spin spin the wheel one more time? Of course. (laughs) I'm excited about this. Right. Here we go. Let's see where it's going to land. Ooh, uh, uh, D- ooh. Again, more difficulty tolerating frustration. I think you need to spin it again. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's trying to tell me something about myself. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Okay, come on, big money. Come on then. Here we go. Mm, mm. <laughs> again. Honestly. <laughs> Are you sure? Is there someone behind it <laughs> controlling it? Right, right it. okay. Maybe here we go. I spin it. Okay, yeah, maybe if you spin it. <laughs> Ooh, this is exciting. Time Time blindness. blindness. That's a good one. It is. It is. Yes. Many people with ADHD are completely unaware of time. Mm. (laughs) They don't necessarily have a relationship with time. And that's something that, um, that's that's also one of the most common, common challenges that I work on with my clients and that we do. Um, My biggest recommendation for that is to wear a watch. And um, even a smartwatch, uh, I don't like how things feel on my skin. So I never wore a watch for a really long time. And then I discovered these soft bands. And so now I can wear it. I don't even notice it. And so now I can see what time it is. I can set alarms um, to remind myself to do things, to pay attention. Um, I have a lot of anxiety about being late to things or forgetting something. So if I set an alarm that's going to go off, I know that I can work on whatever I'm working on without having to worry about forget losing track of time and it really helps with my anxiety that way so yeah mm-hmm. it's good that you've learned about yourself along the way as well and you can help your clients yes. the other thing that I really love to do for myself and my clients is what we call a BVA which is a budgeted versus actual and you um, you pick something that you need to do like unload the dishwasher or clean it off the stove and then um, you guess how long it's gonna take you and then you time yourself and you hopefully remember to turn off the timer. That's my problem. I usually forget. And um, and then you compare. Like, did you overestimate? Did you underestimate? So. Time estimation is a big one it's as well. Yeah. One, right? Yes. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. And once you learn that about yourself, then you can keep that in mind. So whether you're anxious about something taking too long, then you know, wait a second. In the past, I know that it's actually taken shorter. I can trust myself that it's not going to take that long. Or if you chronically underestimate, then you can be like, no, no, no. I know I need to add an hour or 15 minutes or whatever. Yeah, I know with most ADHD uh, clients I see and speak to, they say they either arrive somewhere really early yeah. or they turn up late. Yes, right. <laughs> I agree. So there's no kind of like just five minutes uh, arriving early, but no. it's like half an hour, an hour early. Yes, <laughs> yes. Or turn up the you know <laughs> the wrong day sometimes. Right. <laughs> yep. You know. Yep, I do. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks for um, chatting with me, um, Hannah. And nice to, to meet you guys, everyone. Yeah, this is Justice and Sean, and they um, are working in our marketing department. And Sean has ADHD. Oh, great. Yeah, and Justice doesn't have ADHD, but she supports us so well. She's amazing. Excellent. Nice to meet you and guys. This is Wendy. I didn't see you back there. And Wendy <laughs> is one of our um, outreach coordinators. She works with um, people who are interested in coaching. Excellent. Amazing. Nice to meet you all, guys. If you can listen to the podcast, that would be great as well. I've left the card somewhere. Yes, You've got it. yes I will absolutely listen. And I'll listen to your podcast as well. Great, cool. Cheers, thanks for that. Take care. Thank you. Right. We are at the Talking College stand, and I'm pleased to say I've got Andrea. Yes, hello. Nice to meet you. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Andrea Malkin-Brenner, and I am a college transition educator. I was a college professor for 25 years, studying sociology of the first-year student, and I'm an author of the book How to College and the creator of the Talking College Card Decks. So what is Talking College? So Talking College um, really takes the idea that conversations about college should happen in the home, and they are conversation prompts for discussions about the transition to college for students and their parents. Mm-hmm. And and then the book? 
Uh, the book is a how-to for students heading to college and for their first year of college. Um, it's a light kind of humorous book uh, written by two college professors um, and it really tackles all of the trials and tribulations of the transition to college. The reason we're here at this conference is because we have just rolled out Talking College College Ready and those are discussion prompts for students with learning differences. So um, ASD, um, ADHD, dyslexia, dysgraphia and social anxiety. I'm, I'm a physician myself. I see lots of clients going through that transition, leaving you know school going to college it's a tough transition as you probably know um, some people drop out and I think the the level of independence required and certainly when you think about some of them will be moving away from home as well uh, the demands um, some of them often enjoy it just because they're doing the things that they actually like compared to doing lots of subjects and stuff that you would naturally do at school but yeah um, I don't know if it's the same in, in the US but certainly in the UK as I said it's a big transition and um, a lot of them struggle Yes, I mean, the transition from high school to college is so problematic for so many students. We have a very high dropout rate in the U.S., um, and we have students who are just failing to thrive. They are successful in that they proceed from their first to second year of college, but they're not necessarily doing well uh, mental health-wise. And so that's really, we're trying to prep families with some of the what-would-you-do scenarios of college life um, and really build college readiness skills. So the card decks, what, what sort of tips and things are you kind of covering on the cards? Right. So all of our card decks cover all of the themes of college. So we've got things ranging from safety to mental health to how to handle your money to family expectations. We've got relationships, how to get along with a roommate, boundaries and consent, um, issues of maybe of spirituality, getting involved on campus, the big questions about college, the differences between high school and college academics, and then focusing on drugs and alcohol. And the idea is to, um, so how, how does it work? So, okay, you've got a young person who's moving to college and would you kind of, is it doing coaching with them or? Right, it's a great question. And some of these conversations can happen in the home with right. stu college bound students and their parents and guardians. This one in particular, the College Ready Deck for students with learning differences is geared towards uh, mental health practitioners, um, physicians, um, executive functioning coaches, teachers, and parents, and really is kind of building conversation. So the cards are all color-coded, so they can be chunked, and they can be kind of focused on um, separately. Um, we really like to say that it's important to start talking about college while students are still in high school, so not waiting till that summer before college to kind of teach your kid everything there is about college. Um, and they can be dinner table conversations. I'm often asked why I don't do um, electronic versions of these. And the answer is most di family dinner tables are tech-free zones. And so we ask families to pick up a theme and start talking about those topics at the dinner table or in the car, on a walk, somewhere where it's really private family time. So certainly often you need a young person on board and engaged in this conversation as well. Yes. So yeah, uh, absolutely. All the all the uh, the things that the kind of topics that you covered, they're all very important like you know drug and alcohol, the transition leaving home as well because some of them, you know, they've always lived at home and they find it, they'll probably struggle just moving away. You know. Right, absolutely. And um, you know, so all of these are uh, based on data. Um, I spent a year in focus groups and interviews with college presidents down to resident assistants and campus staff asking for all of these prompts. So these are created by colleges, the content is created by colleges, uh, and these are the conversations that colleges want families to have. Wow, excellent. Um, for, for anyone who wants to find out more about the cards and certainly about Talking College, where can they find more information about this? Sure, talkingcollege.com. Are you on social media at all? I am too. Yes, absolutely. A yep, ambrenner.com. You can find me, Andrea Malkin Brenner. Um, and if you go to the Talking College website, you can find all my social media handles. What's the feedback from um, clients? Uh, so far, so good. Um, we are t uh, two and a half years out. We have sold about 30,000 decks. And um, we have several colleges that instead of sending a water bottle or a pair of socks, they're sending the card decks to all of their incoming students, which has been really exciting. And, you know, it's a win-win situation. Families participate in the transition and colleges are getting better prepared students. Amazing. Um there could be access from anywhere in the world or just yeah, in the US? All, no, no, they're accessed anywhere in the world. Um, we sell from the website anywhere in the world and they're also sold on, every, everything is sold on Amazon as well. Excellent. So yeah, talking college card decks for anyone who's interested. And certainly, I think, as I said, definitely something that's 
uh, very important to start to have a conversation with young people to prepare them. And sometimes, as a parent, you might not know exactly what, what, where to start. At least these cards, we use a, you can use that as a guide to start that conversation. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Good to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. See you, Andrea. We are at the study zone. Oh, yeah. Perfect. And I am with Lauren. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. I'm Archie. I'm from the UK. I'm recording a podcast. If you're all right to come on it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Amazing. Do you want to tell us about what Study Zen is all about? Totally. It's a, it's a new app that's geared towards kids K through 12. Um, and it basically helps them stay organized and get their assignments done in quickly and according to their personal preferences. Um, we do this with AI learning um, to to track exactly how the the child with ADHD, you know, prefers to work, and we chunk up the assignments so like five minutes for math because they don't like math, and they do it for five minutes and they get a big reward system and it encourages it gives them confidence, gets the work done and encourages them with a reward. Okay, so age group wise, this could be used from a very young age all the way to kind of college and university yeah so i personally use it with my six-year-old son who's in first grade and literally within a month his teacher came to me at a parent teacher conference said 200 percent better yeah so like he does he doesn't like english uh hates spelling used to get so anxious about it and just but having these small moments to work through it with him um he went from getting a zero out of 20 to an 18 out of 20 um just this year Wow, amazing. That's, that's positive feedback. Um, so if you could just break it down to us, how does it exactly work? So you download the app, and then what happens from that? Yeah, so you download the app, you enter in the classes or subjects that your child has, so math, English, arts, and then on a scale of one to five, one being easy, five being hard, you rate them um, on, on what they find easy or hard. And then you rate... Uh, the assignment type so written assignments group assignments there's probably seven categories it takes five minutes and then once you do those two things uh, we send you the information it's like a guided tutor and it says spend five minutes at this time of the day on this subject um, and and it and it schedules out for them when it's going to be best for them and it, it, it puts them into these categories that the AI learns, okay, this is how best to work with you and your, your learning style. So it's like a study revision planner for, for the week or for whatever duration you want to make it for. You nailed it. Wow. Okay. And, and then what, what are the rewards that they get from it? Yeah. So for now, um, it is parent-based. So the parent decides, okay, at 50 points, I want you to have an hour of guilt-free TV time or video game time. Eventually, we're really hoping to build in in in-app games and activities. Um, You can buy certain songs or white noise, things like that. And certainly, as you know, with uh, some of the ADHD young people that we see, and even adults, when they start on the top, it can take them a while to get started on something, particularly if it's not that engaging or they'll put it off and put it off and stuff. So how would they get motivated, even with the app, to kind of go, okay, I need to spend half an hour on this task, even though they're not really keen on it? Right. So, I mean, if you want to be successful in school, you have to do the work anyway. And this, the idea is that with this, it just gets it done and out of the way. Right. And would it break it down into kind of smaller chunks to say, to spend 10 minutes doing this? Exactly, exactly. And, and it's scientifically proven that specifically with kids with ADHD, people with ADHD, chunking out time is a game changer. Yeah. Um, and so this literally just helps with that hugely. Okay, excellent. Um, any research that's been done at all like to see the outcome and feedback that you got from it? Oh yeah, I mean we've we've tested it among our, ourselves uh, with friends and family, and so far it's it's very well received. It's very simple right now, really easy to use. Takes five minutes to set up, um, and eventually we're going to collect enough data to really make some big waves and and get a lot of you know feedback. Um, is is it free or is that? 
Yeah, so specifically right now until the end of the year, anyone who downloads the app, you get lifetime access for free. Um, and after that, we're, we're trying to decide between, you know, $90 to $100 a year or $10 a month or $250 per, for life, right? But yeah, until, until the end of the year, just because we want to get a lot of users um, totally free. Okay. Um, any, uh, do you have a website for people to have a look at? Yes, it is trystudyzen.com. And so. studyzen is S-T-U-D-Y-Z, or Z, as we call it, E-N. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Thank you for that. <laughs> no problems at all. Um, I'll probably grab a, a couple of your cards yeah. as well, if that's all right with you. Uh, here, grab Perfect. A how, are you, how are you finding the conference? Oh, it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah, I... I like that it confirms, you know, studies that we already know about and then expounds on stuff. Yeah, yeah. Super helpful. I forgot to ask, um, can this app be accessed anywhere in the world or just in the US? Yeah, anywhere in the world. Um, we are days away from getting it on, on Android. For some reason, iOS was really easy and Android was weirdly harder. So yeah, we're setting that up. Right now it's a parent portal only. And in about four to six weeks, we're going to get it ready for student portals. Right. Yeah. 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 And how about with things like um, preparing for exams, for example, revision and all of that? It covers that as well. Yes. Yeah. So it'll, it'll set it up according to the assignment type. And I'll say, okay, you have an exam at this time. You should study it this for this long because so for example it's an arts and like it's a it's an arts project you're really good at arts so you don't need to prioritize that you know what i mean yeah. but math you've got that math exam you really need to you know take take this time and chunk it out and focus on that excellent I'll, i will play around with it and have a look and uh yeah certainly um give you some feedback at some point as well that would be huge we are obsessed with feedback yeah. Um, definitely anyone who tries this out, go to contact at trystudyzen.com and yeah. give us all the feedback possible. Amazing. Nice to meet you, Lawrence. Yeah, you too. Appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Take care. See you later. <laughs> Can I have a quick word with you if, if you're all right with that? Is that okay? Perfect. Do you want to introduce yourselves? Hello, I am Michael. And I am Lucy. And we're both with Comstrips. Calm strips. So what is calm strips? So calm sh oh. Go for it. Calm strips are uh, textured sensory stickers, so they're great if you have uh, restless energy or, um, or fidget. They're great. They're textured stickers. They're reusable. They're residue-free. You can put them on your phone. You can put them on your laptop. You can put them on a school desk, a book, kind of any flat surface. And uh, we have designs that are just strips, as the name calm strips implies, uh, as well as designs that are based on popular mindful breathing techniques like um, box breathing, lazy eight breathing, things like that. Do, do you have the strips here? I do. Yep. So here are some samples right in front of you right here. We have three of our popular designs. And uh, these are actually the three different textures that we offer. So we have um, soft sand. Uh, this one's called Pattern Pebbles. And this one's called River Rocks. And they kind of get from um, kind of, they're different textures, but kind of uh, less textured to more textured as you go down the line. And how, how are they meant to be used? Yeah, so they're really, really great. So you can see, well, it's audio. Your listeners can't, your, your listeners can't see, but... Let me, let me film the, that part. <laughs> okay, one sec. <laughs> All right. We are at the Calm Strip stand. We've got Lucy over there. All over her uh, laptop over there, as you can see. Yeah, true right. story. So, I put them anywhere and like I love to do this like if I'm just having a, a moment um, I'm prone to panic attacks just just slow down and breathe um, I like the really kind of the subtle kind of soft sand texture but I also um, really like the breathing activity as well it kind of helps kind of calm me down in those in those stressful moments and anyone can use these young people yeah, um, uh, adults uh, I guess uh, like Milton Bradley, uh, 8 to 80. Um, they're really, really great. Um, and we're in over 5,000 schools now uh, worldwide and have over 200,000 um, satisfied customers who have been using them and loving them. So, yeah. Do you have a website at all? We sure do. Um, you can go to um, comstrips.com. Um, and there you can see our, our whole lineup and learn more about uh, comp strips and how they work and all that good stuff. Perfect. Anything you want to add? 
I think Michael covered it. I mean, I just really like the designs. I think they're gorgeous. Obviously, I use them for their intended purpose, but they're just, they're super cute. And also, because you can put them like on the back of your phone, take them with you. It's something that you will already have with you. You don't have to remember to take this tool, um, which just makes it incredibly convenient. So the idea is to just soothe and calm you if you're feeling... Yeah, absolutely. So I like to tell people specifically if you tend to be a person that meditates at all, right? Meditate with your calm strips. And then when you are out about during the day and you're having a moment and you're like, this is not how I want to feel, go back to your calm strips, use it as a touchstone to bring that calm back. Yeah. Excellent. That's a very good idea. Thank absolutely. You. Amazing. I'll grab one of your Please cards. Do, yes. Is that what I believe? Archie, you could take two. I like you. <laughs> you could take three of them if you want. I, you've, you've really won me over. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> Thank you. Take. Doesn't take very much. I, I was just going to say. I'm desperate for attention, so <laughs> this is great. So, I've never had someone put a microphone in my face. <laughs> You're famous now, Michael. I know. It feels great. It feels great. <laughs> You're so silly. Excellent. All right. Good to meet you. Cool. Bye, Luce. You. See you later. <laughs> Right, we're just going to have a quick walk around in the exhibit hall. I can see there's a book signing going on. Well, I was going to speak to you guys. Hi there, you okay? Can I have a quick word? Is that all right with you? Yeah, my name is Archie. I'm doing a podcast called the ADHD Care Podcast. So you are neurospicy. Yeah, yes, we are neurospicy. We are Thrive Emerge, and, okay. and we work with a lot of neurodivergent teens and young adults and newly adult, newly diagnosed adults with ADHD and autism spectrum disorder. What, what exactly is neurospicy? Neurospicy is a term that we got from the neuroaffirming community because I'm trained as a psychiatrist, so you're always looking at diagnosis and pathology and how people are broken, and we thought... Our folks that we work with hear enough of that anyway. What we really want is a term that's much more positive and supportive and neuroaffirming. So when we say neurospicy, we mean anybody who has a brain that works in a very unique and interesting way from learning disabilities to ADHD to autism spectrum disorder and uh, many other things. Too. So it's, it's typically what we would call neurodivergent. Neurodivergent is another term, yes, right. exactly. Neurodiverse, yes. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So neurospicy, right, okay. So there's different flavors when you think about spicy, don't you? <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. It's the same analogy, really, when you think about the different terms you mentioned with autism and learning disability. So what, what support do you offer to clients? We offer many, many different kinds of services. We've been around for about 20 years now, and one of our programs is called The Village, which is a wraparound uh, program, peer-based outdoor for struggling to launch young adults with ADHD and autism. We do a lot of diagnostic work, medication management, executive function, so we're a very comprehensive, multidisciplinary team. My wife and I started this about 20 years ago because we have three daughters, and the book ends in neurodivergent, and we felt like we could not get in the community the services that we wanted so as a psychiatrist I just set up the kind of clinical you know program that I wanted for my own kids yeah. are you still practicing as a psychiatrist uh, very actively yes yeah with a full full team of people that I work with as well well wow. and whereabouts are you based we are Baltimore Washington area primarily for our our sort of more the re the medical reimbursable services but we do work across the country with like educational consulting and um, and parent parent consulting and executive function coaching those sorts of things parent, and we have a parent support group that we w run once every month so which yeah is, which yeah. is virtual so it's unlimited in terms of uh, geographic area for participants. I was just about to ask, yeah, okay, so, and I can see there's a few books on here. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about them? Certainly. There's one that's called um, Neurospicy, a Parent Empowerment Guide. So, yes, please. And this was written by me and a number of other staff. Uh, and I always say this is how I talk to my 
parents of my young adults. We sit down, we give you a framework for how we think the neurodivergent brain typically works. Here's what the journey with a neurodivergent kid is going to be like. Here's some things that we think are useful for treatment. So there's, there's that perspective that we have. And then the other two books that we have here are actually done by a group in New York called Equality Education. And they more work with social and emotional learning with younger kids. So one of these is a coloring book for younger kids. Although, as my wife says, she loves doing it because it's very meditative. And the other is a guide, a more uh, self-affirming exercise guide. So, yes, all available on Amazon. Right, right. Yes. And uh, websites? Do you have a website? The website is www.thriveemerge.com. And make sure you put two E's in because Thrive ends with E and Emerge starts with an E. So, right. (laughs) Excellent. Nice to meet you guys. And uh, are are you enjoying the conference? Uh, we're loving the conference and chatting with people. There's nothing more fun than being in a, in a large room with a whole bunch of NeuroSpicy people. So <laughs> we're having a good time. <laughs> uh, how did you come up with that name, NeuroSpicy? It's actually out there in the whole neurodivergent community. So we borrowed that. And but as I said, we want something that's very positive for people. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, I like your T-shirts as well. Thank you. You can win one in a raffle if you like. Or buy them for holiday gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Nice to see you. Take care. Thank you for stopping by. No problems at all. Yes. <laughs> Chad. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? You are obviously uh, the organizers of this conference. Uh, well, we, yeah, we're the host chapter. The host, yeah, the sponsors, pretty much. Yeah, so Chad, uh, do you want to tell us about yourself and what Chad is all about? Uh, well, Chad um, helps children and adults with ADHD. It's an international uh, organization, and it's a top resource for information about ADHD. Certainly. And it's been running for years and years, as far as I can remember. Uh, yes. I discovered it probably more recently because my son is 19, and he was diagnosed uh, 11 years ago. So that's kind of when I discovered Chad. What is your, what, what's your role within Chad? Uh, well, we're just Greater Baltimore Chad, and um, we, uh, you know, have programs for the local area. There's several different chapters that people can join based on the area that they live in, and you know, we'll do talks and have uh, bring in speakers for seminars. I was just going to ask, would you mind telling us a little bit more what support you offer as part of the chat? So you mentioned about seminars there and workshops. Anything else that um, people can expect? Well, we have different um, groups, uh, parent groups, um, a women's group. So, uh, you know, there's different groups, you know, people who are spouses of individuals that have ADHD, um, parents of children with ADHD. So there's different, um, you know, groups that people can find and they can join and become part of a community to help them get information about ADHD and get support. So yours is a local Chad, so this is just for Baltimore? Yeah, we're just Greater Baltimore Chad, correct. But Chad is an organization, obviously that's international. Chad is an international organization, so um, different areas will have local chapters that people can join. And also just to mention that your website has lots of resources as well. Oh, absolutely, yes. Chad is the number one resource for information about ADHD. Do you want to tell our listeners the website? Uh, Chad.org. Straightforward. And Chad, it's C H A D D. Because we get confused when you say Chad. Sometimes people think it's just one D. Yes, no, yes, Chad, yes, exactly. Double D's. Double D's. An ADD. Exactly. Nice to meet you. Take care, guys. is the greatest. Greater Baltimore chapter is the greatest. It's the greatest. Have a good one. Hey, I'm back. I've got a microphone this time. Oh, hey, oh, no. Woo, look. <laughs> do you remember me? I do remember you from yesterday. We exactly. So, yeah, this is the other side of me. Uh, you host a podcast. I do host, uh, host a podcast. I'll give you a card as well. Oh, I would love to. Yes, tell us more. Uh, there, you, there you go. Thank you. Hey, thank you. So, we discuss all things ADHD on the podcast as the name, the title. <laughs> ADHD Care Podcast. It tells you it all right there. Exactly. So, yeah. Would you mind me speaking to you, uh, asking you a few questions about QB Tech? Yeah. Obviously, I know what QB Tech is, but obviously for the listeners. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Do you want to introduce yourselves, girls? 
Yeah, my name is Jen Shortell. I'm a business development manager and a licensed marriage and family therapist working for QB Tech. And I'm Gina Harvey, business development manager and a clinical advisor for QB Tech, LMFT as well, licensed clinician. Excellent. Nice to meet you. Um, what is QB Tech? QB Tech is a medical device company that provides objective data uh, for Q uh, ADHD assessments. And uh, how does that work? We provide 15 to 20 minute computer based assessments that measure attention, impulse control and hyperactivity in patients ages 6 to 60 years old. Yep, excellent. And the test is itself, how is it taken? So if you could just describe to us how it works. So is it a computerized test and what results do you get from it? Yeah, absolutely. So we have two formats of our test. It can be taken in office or remotely. It's going to be taken for 15 minutes. If you are six to 12 year old, uh, our adults and adolescents, it's a 20 minute test. Um, and it's going to measure attention, impulse control and hyperactivity. And then a report gets generated back to the clinician with really visual results um, with comparing that patient's results to a normative group. And that's, that's the point I wanted to ask you, the normative group. So, um, so that's done specifically to the age, gender. Yeah. Yes, their um, their age as well as their biological sex, the gender. Right. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right, and certainly this could be used for assessments and also for people in treatment in terms of titration, for example, someone on medication. Yes, we are FDA cleared and CE marked for both the initial diagnosis and uh, measuring response to treatment. Excellent. Like what I said in the, uh, yesterday when we spoke, uh, we use this a lot in the UK, and um, that's very useful too to have. Because we never had an objective test beforehand, as you probably know. Uh, I know there's been a few uh, objective test measures that came before QB Tech, but I think the research that's gone behind QB Tech clearly you can clearly see the benefit that it has. So yeah, well done, guys. Thanks. We're really we're really happy to be here. Really proud of the work that we're doing. And certainly, there is the remote telehealth element to this test as well. So just to add that, do you want to say a little bit more about that? Yeah. Absolutely. We've completed over 200,000 tests worldwide. Um, it's really increased access to care and it gives, um, especially in the U.S., it's given, you know, in really rural areas a lot more um, flexibility for both clinicians and patients to access the care that they need. Excellent. I thought you were going to say something. I'm just, thanks for having us. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, lastly, what is your website? Uh, www.qbtech.com. Excellent. Are you enjoying the conference? We are having a really nice time. It's been great to meet so many people and talk all things ADHD. Amazing. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to have a coffee and then start getting ready to go back to the lectures in the afternoon. So I think I've done, I've interviewed lots of people in here. Sounds great. <laughs> Good to see you. Take care. Take care. Bye.